Welcome back to FNA Right. So today in the usual spirit of making things easier in unnecessarily complicated ways, uh, we have my six inch rotary table. Um, it's just an import, repainted, rebranded like any number of them are. Um, and I'm going to add it to the digital readout on my mill. What I'm going to do is remove the handle and in its place I'm going to put a rotary encoder. I have to make a bracket that will somehow mount it around here and a handle to turn it. Now, I, the best way to do this would be to somehow put a, uh, the encoder driven directly by the table itself. There would, then that way I wouldn't have to worry about backlash or anything like that between the, the handle and the, the worm drive inside. But there's no practical way for me to do that, really. Uh, there's not enough room inside the base casting, and I don't want some big thing hanging on the side, uh, you know, like a contact wheel or something like that, because chips can get in it, and I have small machines, and frankly, I can I need all the room I can get. So, it's going to be driven by the handle, and the way I'm going to um, reduce, if not eliminate, any backlash issues, because you always want to turn in the same direction. You never want to you can see, let me put this handle back on. You can see there's a little bit of movement before the table actually starts to move if I go backwards. And that's just the space within the, the gear teeth or the worm. Uh, yeah. So you always want to be moving in the same direction so that the, that space, uh, the backlash is taken up. So the way I'm going to eliminate that is by using a one-way bearing. You can see that it's keyed and it spins freely in one direction but it will not spin in the other direction. Now, I don't know, I'm sure that there's some inherent backlash in this but as long, I think as long as it's less than the backlash in the worm drive here it shouldn't be an issue. Um, so yeah. So as for the rotary encoder itself, it's a 30 millimeter ID, 3600 pulse per revolution hollow shaft encoder. Now it's supposed to have, you know, it nominally has 3600 pulses every time you go around. 30, it'll count 3600 times, but in actuality, it has. 14,400 because there's actually two encoder disks inside this, both with 3,600 uh, 3,600 marks and the encoder reads so that doubles the 360 and but the, the, the encoder also reads when the stripe it reads the rising and falling edges, which doubles it again, which makes 14,400 pulses. Um, let me go ahead and get the, uh, the DRO set up on the mill ready, and I'll hook this up and I will demonstrate uh, what all that means. All right, so I've got you over here at the mill. And in order to get this set up, to go into settings, we enable the W axis. Now the W axis on this uh, digital readout setup, it can either add it, well, just like it was on my lathe, it can either add itself to another axis or it can be an angular readout. So that's what we're going to use this time. Display angular. And 
So counts per inch. So we'll start with 3600. I'll go back. Okay, so go ahead and zero it out. Now at 3600, I should go around, four, well, for one turn of the encoder, I should uh, should show three turns on the, um, the readout. 300, you know, zero to 360, four times. So one, two, three, four. So that's what I was talking about just a moment ago, where it's 360 pulses per revolution, but it's actually multiplied by four because of the way that the encoder is set up inside. So we'll go ahead and change it to that. Now we should, for one rotation of the encoder, we should see 360 degrees. And we do. Now, the rotary table, it's actually, like I said, it's a 90 to 1 gear reduction. And with this encoder on, or being driven by the crank handle instead of the table itself, it multiplies that 14,400 by an additional 90, which gives us 1,296,000 pulses per, or uh, yeah, pulses per revolution. Pulses of the encoder per revolution of the table itself. So this time we should see the opposite of the 3,600 meaning for one revolution of the encoder I should only see four degrees on the readout. Yep, and we do. So this nominally gives me um, one arc second resolution. Now whether or not it'll actually be that accurate, I don't know. Um, I obviously, I don't need that kind of accuracy. It's pretty cool if I can have it, but even still, uh, it'll be plenty accurate for the things I do around this shop. So the first order of business on this project is to create the, uh, the handle, the crank handle that actually has, uh, that fits in here and it'll have, you know, it'll have a crank handle on it similar to that. And then after that, um, the actual housing that will attach this, uh, the encoder, to the rotary table itself. Um, what I intend to do is make something that actually clamps to this flange right here. So uh, let me go cut some stock and I'll meet you over the lathe. All right, so we're over at the lathe. I uh, got my stock cut, set up in the chuck. I'm gonna go ahead and face this side off and bore a hole in it. Um, 8.66 diameter and one inch, eight thousandths deep. Uh, it also gets a 4.72 through hole. So uh, let's get started.
Okay. So I'll just eat <clears throat> Z zero. Three point seven three. <clears throat> so <clears throat> put in our value three point seven three. Sorry, let's try that again. Three point four seven three. And then we'll minus our final dimension, which is 3.15. Got 323 thousandths to go. It's gonna take a little while. I'll bring you back when I'm there. <clears throat> heavy chamfer on this. So that's the outside diameter of the hand wheel. Go ahead and turn or uh, drill the holes now. Try and send this big boy through. So three quarters of an inch.
472. I will take it. Okay, now I'll bore out the counter bore in the front of the in the front side. And that is one inch eight thousandths deep. Alright, so I got the part flipped around. I've got to face it to length, uh, bore a hole in it, and take the outside down to one inch 181. So there is a lot of material removal to come. Um, I guess I'll face it off, bore the hole first, and then I'll bring you back when I get close on the OD. Yeah, I wanted this to kind of just be a, a nice slip fit because it's keyed so it doesn't need to be pressed. lathe work done on this piece. Um, the only thing left to do to drill a hole for the crank handle and cut a keyway here and on the internal diameter. Um, the internal one I'll probably just do by hand with a file. 
um, and the external one, it's it's going to be a slot cut all the way through here, and I'll just do that on the middle. So, all right, that's next.